everyone and happy Sunday. It was actually really really sunny earlier but it is not anymore. I have just got up and got myself ready. My hair is coated in oil um, to keep it in a bun. I just don't need to wash it as much at the moment. I really feel like it's like paying off. Um, I've coated it in the Gizu hair oil. This one I find is like super rich and so it's really good for like a hair mask like this. It just saves me time as well on a Sunday when I want to get out and about and do things. Um, it means I don't have to bother faffing with my hair and I can just whack it up and feel fine. I'm actually wearing an outfit that I absolutely love at the moment as well. It's one of those items that I'm not supposed to be showing you yet because I obviously have a video coming up. But the moment that this jumper arrived, I was like, oh my goodness, this is my dream autumn winter jumper. And I have worn it non-stop. This is from Lily Silk, and I feel like I need to get up close to show you. Look, look, look at those colours. There's like this warm taupe in there, a charcoal grey, and a really beautiful oatmeal, all mottled together to create the best jumper to, to just throw on and feel wonderful. I've also popped on a Sabina Savage silk scarf, which I feel like the colours of this underneath the turtleneck just poking through I love and it's such a lovely layer of warmth that adds a bit of intrigue to the outfit um what do I have to catch you up on okay so on Friday Ali and I went down to London for an offline um trip which we really really enjoyed we just kind of needed it to decompress after everything over the past month with Evergreen it was just really nice for us to just go and relax we planned to do a shopping trip on the Friday and then had a spa day on the Saturday and then came home and just relaxed on the sofa. Um, so I did a bit of shopping in London and I did not take you with me, but I do have the items to open up with you right now. I haven't decided if I'm going to wear the shoes now because I actually don't know if they match the bag as well as I hope. I didn't have the bag with me to match, but... I saw these Chanel shoes online, I saw them on the For You page on Instagram and I thought they must be old season because every time I go in and ask whether they have these burgundy ballet pumps they look at me like I'm mental. And I walked in and it was like a burgundy fest in uh, Chanel. They had burgundy bags, they had the burgundy sling bags but not in my size otherwise I would have got them. Um, they had the burgundy ballet pumps and they had them in my size so I purchased them and I'll, I'll unbox them, but I, obviously I think they'll match my vintage Kelly, but I'm not sure they'll match the new Birkin 25 in Rouge H that I got. But we shall see. Either way, I know that I can go to Emmy London and get that colour matched perfectly if I want to. So yeah, and then basically what we did, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you would have seen, you won't have seen, but you can go and see if you do want to follow me on Instagram, um, is that we went to 1890, which Ali and I went there for the first time last year, about this time last year, and um, we absolutely loved it. If you enjoy that really quite immersive, high quality Michelin star dining, but there's something a little bit different. So this is super, super intimate. There's like 10 tables. Um, the food is spectacular. The wine pairings are incredible and they actually have at the moment, which was something new for us to, to experience, is the underwater wine pairing, which is the first of its kind. 1890 is the first restaurant to ever do this and um, all of the, pro the profits from uh, the underwater wine pairing goes back to cleaning the beaches, which I think is brilliant and a good little thing to note. We basically treated our friends um, who we thought would love it after we went last year. We, it was their Christmas present. So we took them, only just managed to get it in now, which was nice because it was a, a good amount of time for us that we were seeing and, and feeling something fresh whilst also them experiencing it for the first time. And it was wonderful, just wonderful. We had the best time ever. Um, and then we had drinks, Ali and I stayed over and then had, had our spa day, which was just wonderful. In fact, last night we ended up um, just on the sofa enjoying each other's company. This was actually my outfit that I wore home. So white denim jeans, 
super comfortable with this lily silk uh, jumper I had on my Chanel slingbacks, the beige ones, and this scarf, and then my uh, black and gold Birkin, which was just an easy, easy throw on. So, without further ado, I'm going to get into the bits that I bought just to show you, and then we're going to get on our merry way. We're hoping to head into um, Milton Keynes to see if I can get to the Waterstones there because I have a funny feeling that some of my books are in there and I haven't actually seen my book like in store yet so that's something that I really want to experience. Then we're going to go and see um, Ali's nan, it's her birthday, um, just to check in on her, make sure she's okay, take her some flowers, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's generally what we're doing and then this evening Ali and I are knuckling down and um, getting some things done around the house, so ordering some furniture, deciding on some fixtures, hopefully having a little bit of a plan of action for um, the like lower ground floor. I always get comments on my videos and people are like, you never show us anymore. It's such a weird thing because it's not a conscious thing that I do. I don't not show you it because I'm like embarrassed. It's because you'll know I'm really affected by like my surroundings. I love feeling like at home in a space and it feels like it's very different to our home down there. And we're both really eager to kind of get cracking. And so we had this long chat on our dog walk this morning about what the plan of action would be to get that sort of tackled. And we really want to do so in the most cost effective without cutting corners way. And so we were sort of deep, like briefing on that. So I'll bring you up to speed on that afterwards. But first and foremost, let's get in to um, what I purchased. So, so first and foremost, the shoes because that's what I just told you about, and I'm hoping to see if they match my bag. The moment of truth. So I actually go for a size up in the ballet comps, and the reason why I purchase these shoes, because I always like to tell you my justifications, how I see them fitting into my wardrobe, to let you know that I've considered them and um, not just kind of impulse purchased. So I saw these online, um, I saw these on Pinterest, I think, a few months ago and I've been sort of checking in ever since and not found them in store and then there was a picture on, on the For You page like I was explaining earlier and it was like ah so now they're sort of getting a bit more prominent so I'm guessing they were a style and a colourway that was being seeded in slowly but um, wasn't available everywhere. So I was very happy to see the Burgundy Fest in Chanel when I was in there. Now first of all I was looking for a pair of shoes to match that were not boots. I've got a great pair of red boots that match my vintage Kelly beautifully, but I was looking for something a little bit less clunky, a little bit more elegant and easy to wear, and I wanted some ballet pumps, but I was gonna get them color matched at Emmy London. Thought I'd see if these ones worked as well, because I do really like a round toe as well. And it's a color that I, I gravitate to naturally every autumn, winter. Like this color for me is, it's very on trend this season, but you will know there's always been burgundies around this time of year in my Karen Millen collection. Obviously I purchased the Vintage Kelly purely because of that color, that richness, that's almost kind of mahogany tone for me is huge when it comes to this time of year. I like something that looks and feels like a hug and that color always does. So I felt like I couldn't go wrong with a classic, which is the, um, the Chanel Ballet Pump. This silhouette is a classic for me. Either this or the slingbacks, um, either or, doesn't bother me. And, oh, wow. So they look far more red on camera. I'm just gonna let you know that for free. They look far more red, they are not. They're a lot more kicked back. This camera throws up red tones a lot. So let's see if they look right alongside the bags. Oh, oh moment of truth for the new one. Hmm, I'd say it is a bit redder, so I'd say this is probably not for this pair. See, I think again it looks a bit, yeah, it doesn't look, no, it's fine. When you take them away from each other, hold on, let me get my granny socks off. And let me pop you down. When you actually separate them, I feel like it works better. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Ignore the sock. Let's just pretend that's not happening. However, if we get the vintage, I think these will be better with the vintage. Let's just get the sock off, shall we? It's just not working. Come on, come on. I 
feet swell so much, it's so strange. I tried these on in the shop and the size difference between, because these are a five and a half, I'm usually a five, the size difference between these and the six was just so big that they would have been slipping off. My feet swell so much, but yes, this definitely works with the vintage Kelly. It's so weird, because I actually feel like it's... Hmm, which one do you think is better? Matches better? Hmm? Let me know in the comments, but either way, I've got a good one there. I think that works really well. And this is the kind of outfit that I would wear it with, like a really lovely uh, mottled jumper like this. Nice bag, a bit more casual, but you put good accessories with it so that it looks like you've tried. I think that's what I really like. You'll be probably thinking, Lydia, why do you need two bags that are the same colour? This is like my, my homage to Hermes <laughs> because this bag is over 50 years old and this is everything as to why I fell in love with the brand. You'll remember I really kind of like stuck my nose up at it um, a few years ago. I'm making a whole video all about like handbags and collections and things like that, but um, this to me, it epitomizes what it is that I love about the brand is that this is still so easy to wear today, 50 years on. So um, yeah, and it's one that I can love and throw around. The more battered it gets, the more beautiful it gets. And I love that. So anyway, that's kind of my thought process for the day. Anyway, the shoes are a win. They go with the vintage better, I would say. So that's all good. Maybe I'll wear that bag today. Who knows? Okay, let's get the shoes off for now. Next up is a brand that, correct me if I'm wrong, you might not have heard of. Or it's just me that was maybe, that it was new to you, but basically, a bit of a story time. Uh, when we went to the Maldives, we met a really, really lovely couple when we were there, and they told us about this brand. And they said, we think you'll really, really like it. I kind of checked it out online and I was like, oh yeah, that definitely looks like a bit of me. Um, but I never ordered anything. I never went into the store. The store is just off New Bond Street. And basically, I would describe them, and they'll probably hate me for saying this, but I would describe them as the British brand, British made, British manufactured version of Laura Piana, I would say, but not as big and not as mainstream. But if you're into championing British brands and um, obviously, really kind of heroing those kinds of products. The, their products are made and they're provide, uh, what, they're, not their manufacturing, what's the word? Their fabrics, their manufacturing, I believe is all done in Britain using British farmers. A lot of their products are cashmere, wools, those kinds of things. And both Ali and I bought something each when we were there. Now I saw this particular item when I walked in and I loved it absolutely loved it. Um, they then told me that there was only four of these made. Now this is a weighty product. <laughs> and this was the last one that they had. And I was just probably hook, line and sinker for all of the buzzwords that they say in stores like that. But I could totally see me wearing this so much, even with like an outfit like this. It is made from British, British cashmere. And it was just the coziest, most beautiful product. It's got that subtle, soft fluffiness to it. I thought, just like this, white jeans, a sort of maybe like an ivory turtleneck underneath. You could go for those burgundy accessories. You could have a silk scarf, all of those kinds of things. I thought this was so, so wonderful. It was a, a, a spenny pur purchase, but um, it's untreated. So it's left in its completely raw form other than it being spun, obviously. So it means that in the rain, it's not gonna get ruined. Obviously you just have to be careful with where you dry it. But it is so cozy, really like heavy, good quality. And I loved the fact that it was um, championing, obviously much more British brands, British farming, that kind of thing. So yes, love this. And I think with these sort of burgundy tones, just to give it like, oh yeah, love that. Absolutely love that. I think with a little scarf. Love, love, love. Okay, so that was that. 
And then the final two bits that I purchased, I'm actually not gonna be able to show you them on, but I can either put in a video or a picture of me trying these on because I was sending them to my friend because I was like, are these a terrible idea? Let me know. But I wanted to go in search of a very, very particular hat um, that was a day wear hat. So not for like event dressing or anything like that. It was like a day wear hat, you know, like good smart coat, good hat, good quality hat. And I wanted it to be quite sharp. And so I went to Lock & Co, which is somewhere that we've been before, but I've never actually bought anything. I'm a huge fan of their hats. They are on St. James Street in London. Again, one of those really iconic British brands. I think they do, they did James Bond, and this hat is from the James Bond collection. Actually, not this one. This one's not from, they're in different boxes because I wanted to get this box for Ali's dressing room. So I bought two hats. And this is the sharp hat. This is the summer hat. So let me just get into the other box. Oh, it's hectic. And so they do a lot of the James Bond films. Um, you'll probably, there's probably a lot of the London hotels, some of the most iconic London hotels. They actually do the hats of like the doorman and the concierge and that kind of thing. And just really, really highly regarded. I believe it, they're royal warrant holders as well. I can get into the bottom of the box. But yeah, I wanted this box to Ali. And so this was the hat. that I went for, doesn't say the name of the hat, but it's very structured. It's very kind of, <laughs> that's not how I'm going to be wearing it. I'm gonna put the uh, video of me wearing it here um, with an all black outfit. I could have obviously added a bow, but I, I quite like the fact that if I want to add any detail into it, I can just add a twilly and the twilly can kind of hang down the back. Um, but this to me was like a really smart, sharp fedora that has a different feel to it. It's a lot more edgy. There's no sort of kink or dimple in the top of the hat. It's just very, very sharp, which I loved. So that is the first hat. And then the second hat is me living my A Room With A View best life, basically. This is my prep for summer. Obviously I have my Emily London hat, which has all the foliage on, but again, I wanted something a little bit sharper, a little bit um, more, a room with a view vibe and I could not, like I just love this, like think gold earrings, that kind of vibe. So those are the things that I picked up when I was in London. Um, I'll link any of them in the description box down below. And um, I might actually put on the cardigan now. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna stay in this or whether I'm gonna change into that. I haven't decided yet. I've also got some other bits and pieces actually. I'll just quickly show you these. I did, um, some online shopping. I've got an order from Victoria Beckham Beauty waiting to arrive, and I've also got an Amazon order waiting to arrive. I ordered some L-glutamine, which I am completely blaming on, um, oh, what's her name, Emily. I follow this nutrition, I follow this nutritionist called Emily the Nutritionist, I think, and um, she's been talking about L-glutamine a lot, and I did some research, in, research into it, and it sounded like it was going to be right for me. I'm gonna give it a try, I'll keep you updated. So that, but then I got served an Instagram story from this brand called WNU. And it was this moss green, which actually is looking more sagey on there, but it's actually not, it's a lot darker. Um, but this sort of oversized brush cotton, sagey, mossy shirt, but it was the black watch. When I saw the black watch, I lost my marbles because white jeans, black watch shirt, that is gonna probably be my winter casual look. So I got those as well. Anyway, I need to get going. I need to get my outfit, not outfit, but I just need to get dressed to go and um, head on my adventures on a Sunday because it's getting dark and we're losing, losing light. Just to show you quickly my outfit of the day. I've got the shoes on and I've got the cardigan on, it is so cozy. And then I've actually just reused this scarf from Sabina Savage, she says such nice, muted tones. I can see the chickens running around. They're so funny. Um, she does really lovely muted uh, silk scarves. I tried to find a scarf with burgundy in it at Hermes in London and they didn't have any that I liked. They were all just a bit too much. So this to me is the vibe that I'm going for. Ah, <sighs> dear. So, the sun is still shining. It is like it's getting to that point in the year where um, 
it's getting like dark so much earlier and it does feel so cozy. I know I won't be saying this when we get to after Christmas, I'm sure it will be a little bit more difficult, but you can see that sunlight on my face. But yeah, I wanted to kind of like have a chat because I, I totally realized that I said about the whole subscription things in my last video. And I wanted to have a bit more of a chat. Probably now is not the time. Maybe when I get home. New sandals. <laughs> he just goes to me, new sandals. Firstly, not sandals. Secondly, we were there the day I bought them. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, I kind of wanted to have a talk with you and just that's probably something that I should do um, either later on or tomorrow or something like that and just chat because like, it's not me trying to like change my, oh, it's so hard, isn't it? It's so hard. Ah. Oh. Anyway, we're on our way out now. Ali's got flowers, gifts for Nan. Lovely. recognize this road you haven't been watching my videos long enough because this is the road that our old house backed onto so we would run across this road and go and get our lunch from the Sainsbury's over here oh my gosh this is so weird when Lumi used to get out she would hide in these woods <laughs> those woods there gosh there so just through here, it would probably be too thick to yeah, see anything, but no, it's here. It's past this sign. Yeah, just down there. Wow. It's where our old house was. A little house. Right by the Mercedes Benz garage. <laughs> um, so yes, we went into Waterstones and I signed some of the books that were there. Um, so if you're wanting to pick up a signed copy and you're from the sort of Milton Keynes area then there are some in there there wasn't loads so I just signed what was there um, and then I went to Charlotte Tilbury I'm having a bit of a makeup moment I think it's because when I did the Karen Millen shoot recently um, Alex did my makeup so wonderfully again she always does that I was like oh I feel like I need to just buy some new bits and I keep seeing the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter on um, I think it's on TikTok. I thought it was a foundation. It's not a foundation, it's a complexion enhancer. So I think I'm gonna give it a go because whenever I see someone put it on their face, it looks really nice. And I don't really often go and buy anything from Charlotte Tilbury. I've got the bronzer, um, which I bought, but I thought I'd try this one. And like I said, I've also ordered some Victoria Beckham bits because um, I've been using her nude eyeliner, but it's almost like my little hack in beauty. Like if Ali ever asks me to cover up one of his um, blemishes, I use that because it's basically skin tone. So it's really good if you don't want to wear a lot of makeup and you just want an on the spot coverage, really precise, um, very easy to like transport, very blendable, but also like multi-use. So um, yeah, I went on and I bought a few of her eyeliners and I think I bought a bronzer and I also bought an eyeshadow. And what I think I need to get is um, a primer for my eyelids and hopefully that will create a barrier between my eyelids and, oh, I wondered what that pigeon was doing then. Um, it, hopefully that will create a barrier between my eyelids and the eyeshadow so I can maybe wear it a little bit more often. But anyway, we're on our way to uh, Nan's now to drop off her present and that is it. So yeah, we just drove past our old house, which is just always weird, but Oh God, I'd love to go and look around that house now. We did it so nicely though. Like we really transformed that house. Like the front garden, the back garden, didn't we? Within our means, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Good evening, everyone. I'm having a bit of a sort out. Uh, we're back from Ali's Nan's now and um, it was so lovely to go and see her. 
and we just took a little walk around the garden because um, after Ali's gramps died, he went around and um, did a lot of clearing in the garden and like raised the canopy there as well, like he does at our house. Um, so there's more light in their garden as well, which is lovely. But um, I'm having a sort out in my room and what I'm doing is looking at things that I shouldn't be looking at yet. So <laughs> if you notice that I have some very, very lovely pearl earrings on, um, just know that they are, they've just arrived from Gingerbread, by the way, I have to show you. The new Gingerbread packaging is unreal. Beautiful royal blue um, with the sort of goldy taupe Oh, it's so pretty. And then, oh, look at that ring. I can't even show you it yet. But anyway, I've changed these earrings because these are like a more delicate version of the Dior tribal earrings. And they are so much more comfortable than just wearing a stud because they're obviously round on the back. So sleeping on them is a lot easier. So I was just changing those. And then also my diffuser is finished, the one that I homemade myself. And because it is now autumn winter, I'm actually going to treat myself to winter smoke from uh, Seed to Skin, which they sent to me a few months ago. And obviously it wasn't like winter time then. So I'm just gonna get that, oh dear, get that off. I think we're gonna go with these ones. Just because in my room I feel like they'll go a bit better, but maybe they won't, who knows. <laughs> but yeah, just having a bit of a refresh in here, a bit of an organise whilst Ali cooks dinner. Um, so I'm going to pop this up here. And cut that blooming label off. And scissors. Mr Millen Gordon has laid the table. Might get some candles going on here as well. Roast is in the oven. Forty's had his dindins. Hello, my boy. Hello. Hello. And Mr. Millen Gordon is lighting the fire. Oh, ciao, Barky. Ciao, I can see your little cashmere head. Oh, yes, ready for sofa time. Sofa time. Oh, little mountain goats. <laughs> look, Mummy, look how high I can get. A show off. Such a show off. Such a show off. Porty can't do it. He always needs me to give him, give him a little leg up. Come on. Go on. There you go. There you go. Oh, you can't do it, can you? Your legs are just a little bit too short. Hold on. You made it up. You made it up. You are both so clever. We have Bing Crosby on the Sonos at the moment, which we're both loving. And we have a Mr. Mill and Gordon sized roast. My duty doesn't work on my daughter's sizes. No, you won't even have it. So we've just ordered properly sized dinner plates because these are actually charger plates. And the first thing that Ali said to me was, we're going to keep the charger plates though, because I need them for my roasts. <laughs> for lunch tomorrow. Amazing bubble and squeak tomorrow. Not all is lost. Good morning, everyone. It is utter 
carnage in my dressing room today because it is the big autumn winter wardrobe switch out which is something new that I have been doing I did it first last season where I actually for the first time ever packed down all of my autumn winter coats. Um, it was a step, it was a trial and it went really, really well. There's obviously not going to be, able, there's like, it's harder in winter time because there is the likelihood that I might end up going somewhere um, hot at this time of year. So I have to be considerate of that. But things like my gardening dresses and um, those more casual summer pieces can definitely be packed down. So what we're doing at the moment, we're just sorting through my new in rail, which gets quite cluttered, and um, just having a really good pack down. So what the aim of the game is today is anything that you see coming out is likely being packed down and either filed, because obviously I have um, items that I, like with brands that I work with, uh, they're obviously like my summer pieces that I would work with them on, so I can pack those down, and I have like a little filing system, so that helps as well. So anything that you see coming out is being packed down to go into the loft, and um, there might be some bits that, um, from my own wardrobe, that end up going to either charity or that kind of thing, but it is the autumn winter switch out, and this feels so cathartic for me. You know, I love, love, love doing this, and um, I'm very excited to get stuck in a bit later on in the day than I originally planned, but doesn't matter. We are now about to crack on, which I'm really looking forward to. The first thing I want to tackle is my blazers, because they are super, super cluttered, and um, Ali is downstairs making us bubble and squeak with the leftovers of um, yesterday's Sunday roast, and I am so excited. There is only one thing that is almost as good as a Sunday roast, and it is bubble and squeak. <sighs> right, anyway, let's tackle the blazers first and foremost. So I'm gonna pop you here. And at the moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all the blazers out. Remember, I, I learned this when I had a big declutter with we declutter just before covid you basically get everything out organize it into your colorways and have a look at everything properly that you've got and make a decision then so that is my plan of action so ivory jackets are coming out I've got the arvel the dior the marcella london and you can pop that one next although no, that is knitwear get these greens and these tweeds i've got a few of these this can go in my horse riding stuff because this is my shooting waistcoat but you know I no, don't know no just yeah in. just fold it in there because it's like more technical stuff we have dots of these oh no is that blue that's navy okay blazers are in order of color as well we've got ivory greens and tweeds browns and tweeds <laughs> some brownie fawny colored ones then into blues the uh, beautiful sort of, cher not cherry, um, oxblood coloured Fairfax and Favour blazer. And then we've got black ones at the back. Then we've got my scarves and gloves. So we've got silk scarves, which this is my new favourite from Holland Cooper. This green one is so beautiful. Wow, I'm, I've actually ordered another one. Um, yeah, all of my leather gloves and then my warmy, warmy scarves go there. So all nicely organised. Just don't look on the other side. These are all bits and pieces that need to be folded and filed. Now I'm going to tackle this particular cupboard, which was my tops cupboard, but evidently has just become a shirt cupboard because that is all I wear other than like knitwear. Shirts are my thing. And to show you as well, a little behind the scenes, this is what we also have as the shoot cupboard. And all my campaigns are organized via post-it notes. Um, and then the product is put in front of them. So I've got a Space NK one, I've got a Gingerberry one, then Kenzie. So those are all organized there. And it just makes my life easier because I can go, I know where the product is, I know all of the deliverables and it just makes it easier. So this is my shoot cupboard. Um, and then yeah, so shirts. So I think I'm going to pack down some of my more summery shirts. Sorry, I've just eaten and it is making it very, very difficult to um, <laughs> function. So yeah, my more summery shirts like these pink ones, maybe these striped blue ones as well. Uh, some of my more summery two pieces, I think they're all going to get packed down as well. 
I think I'm just gonna put my camera over here because the bodily noises after bubble and squeak. I said to Ali, I thought it was called bubble and squeak because afterwards you bubble and squeak, but apparently according to Jamie Oliver, it's because it bubbles and squeaks in the pan. I'm not sure I'm convinced. <laughs> right, time to pack down. This one though. Oh, yeah, that's nice though. I like those kind of brush colors. Yeah. Right, I'd say that's done for the most part, isn't it? So that's going to go in your um, walking stuff. Yeah. yeah. Now I think what you need to tackle, which is an important section, is that one. Yeah, my knitwear. <laughs> So in here, it doesn't look much different, to be honest, but as I said, all I wear is shirts. So I was just able to take out a few linen shirts and um, make space. Where I have a real problem and a real weakness is knitwear. And I swear, I clear out this cupboard all the time and I just, I don't understand how it gets so, so chock-a-block all the time. And I think I probably wear three of the jumpers in here as well, which is even more ridiculous. And I just pull them out and I'm like, no, I love that jumper. No, I love that. And then I never wear it. Like I've, e I've even kept my sheep jumper, even though it shrunk in the wash, I've still kept it. That's ridiculous because I can't even wear it. But I love it too much to let it go. And I think that sums up why this is such an issue. But we're going to try again. I'm going to give it another once over because I have so much knitwear that is new as well, which is really, really bad. Right, I need to undo my trousers. I'm going to be uncomfortable. Oh, mon dieu. Okay, so these can go, because I'm not going to wear these. Yeah, that I think you should get rid. The green one? This one, definitely. Yeah. Why do you want Even it? Even I don't like it. No, oh. I don't like this. Okay, good. We'll get rid of that then. And you don't like that one as well? That one I can deal with. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the green one. I don't like the blue one either. Okay, blue one can go as well. And I don't actually even want any of these myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's reassuring. I'm not telling you to get rid of it because I want it. See, I like this one, but that's in the wrong place. So these are to keep, right? Yes. No, tell me honestly, do you, you don't like it? No, I love it. I love it. I okay. think you should definitely keep it. If it fitted me, I would say no, I don't it. believe you. No, definitely. Look, I love stripes like this. I like that, okay. this look, not the, you know. Yeah. So what are we doing with the sheep jumper? Should we try and stretch it out? Is it too small for you? It's shrunk in the wash. I think I just need to stretch it out because I'm not letting it go. Yeah. I'm not letting it go. I can't. Is that, is that? Loomy. Yeah. Sounds like she's going, hello. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> It's quite freaky, it's isn't like it? Old woman going, Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> See, this needs to go downstairs into my dog walking stuff, otherwise it will never get worn. How happy are you with that? Very good, yeah. Now this is the hard one though. That's the easy one. <laughs> See, this I think is the best jumper ever. Have you just got that? Yeah. I yeah. stole it from the lily silk stuff that I'm not supposed to be wearing yet. Oh, okay. It's really good. Well then you can just remember maybe to wear it if you I've got so many jumpers and I'm like, oh, I'd wear that more often, but I just don't even know they're there. I bloomin' hang on to this Dior jumper and I literally never wear it. Which one? This one. Yeah, that's cute though. I know, I just love it. Now, I haven't done all of the folding to make it all like nice and smart, but I am impressed with what we've managed to achieve. I've got all my green jumpers, browns, taupes. Then I've put all of my thinner, more cashmere, like fine knits here in color order. Ivories, some sort of melange colored ones. These are more like patterned blacks, stripes and navies. And that is like my cozy cupboard. But what we want to try to achieve now is we want a more realistic approach to 
this cupboard which is my beauty cupboard because I think that this is even though I've managed to edit it down loads it is excessive um, I've got some extra shoes at the bottom so I may try and keep those there and then maybe have this as a more dressy like all of my knitted dresses that kind of thing um, and maybe try and get my fragrances into a drawer or something like that and then just get all of these tools and things like that organized so I think this is going to be the next one that we tackle I mean I can already see that those Jimmy Choo plimsolls can go because they're orange so there's definitely work that we can do here well it is happening we are condensing all of my beauty bits into my dressing table we have started to remove the excess hair tools and products and then I think what we're going to try and do is get my fragrances all stacked in here now I think we're not even going to need to do this to be honest you may have to do it with some of them but I don't think all of them I just think if we get them all down in here we should be in good stead and then if there's any that can't stand up we can use these for them it's so interesting obviously when we moved to this house I was kind of like I want to have enough room to keep all of this stuff and slowly but surely over the sort of nearly six years that we've been here it's just got more and more overwhelming and so I've just wanted a smaller and smaller collection and I genuinely this is still very very excessive um, obviously it's part of my job to try lots of different products in this way so I do have to be conscious of that whilst also trying to keep my mind and like as much as possible my home clutter free so um this always feels like it honestly it feels like a breath out when i do this in my dressing room and i know where everything is and it all just kind of makes sense so um yes i'm gonna carry on moving these bits and pieces in and it is lovely as well How do you feel about that? Are you okay about that? I feel better that it's like that and it's not taking up all that space. I have to be honest because as much as it's lovely to be able to see everything, it's... Yeah, well you, as long as you know where everything is, then... Yeah. And, yeah, that has a room for is it actually, oh, is it a room fragrance? No, it's a perfume, but like, it's going to go off before I ever use anything that big. Yeah. Really? I'm just thinking, isn't that going to make everything together? No. You sure? Yeah. Be careful with your, like, curtain and stuff. Nah. We can leave that. We're going to have to leave the room in Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that feels really good. But yeah, I think personally we've done, I've got to sort this stuff as well. Oh, goodness me. Maybe all your dresses could Knitted dresses? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. What do you reckon about the shoes? Do you think so I need to have a sort through of those for sure. <clears throat> Yeah, so we could put them in like baskets at the back yeah. of those because they're not like kneaded, kneaded. I like never use them. I mean, these are my wedding shoes, so I mean, those are more likely to be used. But I think if we start, if we put them in baskets, it won't look so cluttered. We can just do it either side. I think it'll be a, a good use of space, personally. Down there. Like all the way down there. So, anyway, for example. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but I would it. say, do you know, like if we free up some bigger baskets and, and just put, put the baskets there, just sit in there. Not d down the back. Push them. If you okay. push them down the back, so like big ones like that. If we can yeah, yeah, find I see what you mean, yeah, yeah. some more, then it, it you it it looks like storage back there, <laughs> but it, you don't see all the shoes. I can't actually believe we've achieved this. I mean, don't look at everything that's still on the floor, but we have achieved it. So we ha now have so much more space for more folded knitwear pieces and we've just fed in and hidden shoes that were on the bottom here and then got everything else into my dressing table so this is blooming progress 
Well, I can't quite believe I'm saying this, but we have gained a rail and an entire cupboard just from editing down, having a clear out and taking my summer wardrobe and sort of packing it down. Although I do think that down here, I'm probably going to use this space to store my boots because at the moment I don't have anywhere to do that. So I think that will probably be a good use of my space. Then I've got travel equipment and bits and pieces like that, travel electronics. Um, so yeah, even though the suitcases that were filling this space are gone, we still have a lot of things that we could store in this particular area. And when you organize your cupboard, you find things, and this is such a great little ring light that I got from Amazon that is so small, good enough to pack, easy enough to use, and I just used it to film a TikTok. Ignore all of my weird tripods, but I've also just unboxed for TikTok um, some earrings that I ordered from a brand called, I think it's Sapphire, um, and I saw these on Dion's Instagram because instantly I was like, these feel like vintage Chanel. Now she's very, very kindly sent me some other variations as well. I've got two different earrings in my ears at the moment, which I'll show you. Um, oh, and um, I didn't, I didn't go for these, and I'm so grateful that she sent them because actually they're really, really lovely. I'm going to put these straight in my costume jewelry drawer because actually I really wish that the post on these was in the same position as this one. So it's slightly more in the middle. Um, people have suggested that you can have them moved, but still, I'm gonna pop these in my drawers now because I just love that they look like vintage Chanel, but actually, I think they cost about 24 pounds and apparently they are gold plated as well, which means I'll be super comfortable wearing these too, which is brilliant. I'll show you the ones that I've got on. So I actually don't have the vintage Chanel ones on at the moment, but I have the little gold square ones which these sit really really well on my ears and then these ones which are such an underdog um, I'm gonna pop my um, pearls back in now though just because they are like my everyday these are a bit more of like a statement earring but it's so weird I feel like 2023 has been the year of the earring for me <laughs> I never used to change my earrings I always wore sort of the same ones and I never really um, experimented but now i love it i love changing them out i love playing with the different feels and they really can transform an outfit that's one thing i would say is that jewelry is such a great thing to play around with with an outfit because it can literally just transform an entirely basic looking jumper dress or like normal dress or whatever you're wearing into something a little bit more dressy and i think because it's so small and impactful I never feel quite so like guilty about having a few pairs of earrings um, because they're just easy to store so anyway I'll link the brand in the description box down below it's a lovely little small business and great earrings so probably a good one to support if you ask me but now I am on to storing my boots in my cupboard. Now I wanted to get some hanging space, but I think that now that I've got that cupboard free, the only things that are gonna need storing are jumper dresses and they won't be hung. So that's quite a good one. I'm gonna put these away. Well, my L-glutamine has also arrived. This is by the brand Thorn. And this is a powder because obviously I'm not really great at taking sub supplements. So wherever I can, I'll either go for a gummy or a powder. Obviously, if a supplement like you just simply can't argue with, I will do my best to swallow it every day. But um, it's got to be special. Uh, so what it says is mix one scoop with at least eight ounces of water, juice or prefer preferred beverage daily or as recommended by your healthcare practitioners. Well, I wonder what it smells like. I've never ever had this before. I, I thought that Ali used to have this as a supplement, but I, he says he didn't, so I think I made that up. But I have heard about it before, but I think following Emily, she's kind of like, oh, it's got a very interesting smell. It's almost like, it almost smells like sugar, but like a really faint sugar. Do you want to go outside? 
Bartley ran to the door then was like, I am going to poop my pants. <laughs> I think sausage dogs are so funny. I mean, I'm sure it's just all dogs and it's not just sausage dogs, but it does make me laugh. They, they're just so ridiculous. But he's like, just had his dinner. He's like, mama, mama, mama. Oh my goodness me, mommy, I'm going to poo myself. He's now looking at me like, you're making fun of me, aren't you? <laughs> well, I think I'm gonna mix this up. Is there a scoop in here? Do I put my finger in? Oh, the scoop's right at the bottom. Nope, that's not the scoop. That is the dryness. Let me flip. There is the scoop. Okay, one scoop. I think I'm gonna try it with some Ribena because it smells a bit funny. You know, just in case. I'm learning today what eight ounces of water is. 300 mil. It ish. It's not. It's cool. We went a bit over there. Yeah, I think that's good. Put some ice in. A little bit of juicy juice. Let's get this in first. Do we do? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not a juice person. I am just a water person, but if I'm adding something like this, I'll have to see. But I'm going to keep you posted on the results. Like I said, I bought this myself. This is purely from me being intrigued with all of the issues that I have, how often I have an upset tummy, that kind of thing. That I'm like, well, why not? Why not just try it? So this, oh no, I just broke my blooming nails. Mm. I can taste the powder in this, but it doesn't taste bad at all. Not horrendous. GI support, sport performance, and wound and injury. Mm. Right, we just had dinner, and it was a very quick dinner because that was the kind of dinner that we fancied. Now on to my last assignment of the evening, which is going to be me cleaning my makeup brushes. And when I tell you that this is like the cherry on the I've got my life together cake, that is it. I probably haven't washed these brushes in. Do you know what? I'm not even going to confirm to you how long that's been because um, that would be putting myself in the firing line. But it has been long enough for me to be embarrassed about it. So I'm going to start off by cleaning my everyday brushes. And then I have a load of brushes that I kind of keep in my drawer to um, use and as and when I need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the hack that I think it was Jamie Genevieve taught me where she had the sieve and the... I would also advise you clean the work as well. Well, I will do once I've cleaned this though. So I've got a sieve, and I've got my washing up liquid, and I've got my sink, and we're gonna go in. First up, I'm going to do my foundation brush because, now should I put some water in here? Yeah, let's put some water in here so that I can kind of submerge them a little bit. You are having a fully cleanse yeah. session. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Um, I, I can hardly talk. Um, but what I was going to say is it's very rare that I have like four days in the house back to back, which is what I've got at the moment. Um, so I'm just living my best life, okay? Yeah. Uh, right, okay, now let's get you in position, eh? So, sieve in the water. I'm gonna submerge the brush. In fact, should I submerge all of them? I don't know if that's really bad to do that with your brushes. Will they rot? Who knows, we're gonna find out. Submerge the brushes, pump a little bit of the stuff on the end, and then you just go like this. And it's kind of, you just swill it round, and it literally like takes all of the stuff off. It's so quick and easy. I give it a little bit of a once over. I might give it a double one because it's actually been a hundred years. Oh, damn it, I've just dropped myself in it there. That is one done. Oh, 
don't think that's done enough. This needs, this needs a real shampoo. Clean as a whistle. Oh my God, I feel like a new woman already and I've only done one brush. Okay, next up. This is my bronzing brush. Oh, this feels good. I feel like I've really got my life together until the next annual cleaning. <laughs> It's so bad. 